Welcome to Beyond by Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. Edwards & Associates PC our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wing. In today's episode, we have a very special guest. Her name's Kira, and she's a fabulous team member of a fabulous, versatile group called Dental 18. So Kira, how are you today? I'm doing awesome, Ash. I'm super honored to be here. I love your guys' name because being a dental assistant, um, when I first started out, whew, those bite wings and getting those contacts open, I was real happy we didn't have to talk just that today. So super honored. I think what you guys are doing is an incredible work out there and just excited to be here today. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, for our, today's episode, I was thinking we were going to, we should be calling it Knowledge is Power. I love it. I love think? it. I think yeah. it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't think of a better person to, you know, share the immense amount of knowledge that your team brings to the table. I mean, you guys have various platforms through which you're letting your audience, your listeners know about what they can do, things, you know, they probably already knew about, but, you know, improve upon or things that they had no idea about. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I think it's something that we pride ourselves on and something from being a team member myself and then owning dental practices and taking them from 500,000 to 2.4 million in nine months and buying a second location. There's been a lot of school of hard knocks and things that we've learned and then coaching hundreds of dentists across the nation. Um, I think the knowledge is power is brilliant because pulling from all those resources to share, that's what I'm obsessed with doing. And that's what our company is built upon is to give back and to make the best practices rise. And why not? Success is unlimited at the top. And so let's help other practices take the easy route. It doesn't have to be hard. Let's share those ideas to really elevate our dental community and, and inspire people to be their best as well. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. Now, in your experience, uh, what's that one common area you feel like dentists tend to get relaxed, especially once they've established it to a point where they feel like they've started to make money? Yeah, I feel the zone that dentists get. It depends. If they're a kind of golden spoon dentist who just is really naturally talented and business came pretty easy for them, I feel mm -hmm. they get pretty laxed on like knowing the systems and the processes in the practice because they didn't actually have to. Versus the dentist who it was really hard for them and they became profitable. I think sometimes the zone that they do get laxed in is, again, just having that consistency in there of like checking their meetings and not letting things fall off. Um, I feel that that's kind of the annoying part of being a business owner, but the devil is in the details. And so not letting yourself get lazy or lackadaisical um, within that also keeping a really awesome culture within the team. I think are probably the two zones that I see dentists kind of like fall into that trap uh, just because they're like, whew, but working hard. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's take a breather for a second versus having sustainable systems that will carry that through for them. I see. Now, what would be a good way to make sure that they can maintain that consistency or, you know, set in place a system that, you know, uh, they can be held accountable for their team members to make sure that that culture remains and is maintained? Yeah. So I think there's two sides to it. So one is, and they, they do feed each other. So I think it's realize, and I, I love being a team member. So I started out as a dental assistant. You know, I was a treatment coordinator and a scheduler and an office manager and worked at a dental college. And now I get to own dental practices and consult hundreds of dentists. So really having both sides of that coin of team member and business owner brought to life. But what I found is, Number one, realize and and trust and respect and and empower your team and realize that your team members actually want you to be successful. So as like a dental assistant, as a team member, I wanted my doctors to be so successful because that means I have a job 
and I want them and I love them and my job is there to serve and help them. And so helping doctors realize that that we're here for you and we want you to be successful and we want you to be profitable. And if your team's not behind you and backing, you realize that's not normal and it is very normal. And you can expect to have a team that truly does rally around you. I just say on the flip side of that, doctors also really truly empower your team members and love them and and care for them as human beings. So I think when you can have both sides of that coin, really working to help each other and see each other in those positive lights, that's going to really build that culture. But at the end of the day, one of my favorite books, and Ash, I'm sure you're an avid reader of this one too, Extreme Ownership, where they talk about how everything in there is a direct reflection of that leader. And so doctors really taking that, like I remember one time I was sitting at a conference and they said, CEOs, do your job. And I was like, whoa, like gut, like gut check on me. Are we as owners doing our job? So doctors own it, realize that the culture is 100% dependent upon you and you needing to follow through, which then ties into Ash, like you were asking. And I love to be tactical. So giving you guys some tactical of keeping those systems in play. And so I really recommend for doctors that we work with to block off one or two hours per week called deep work time or admin time or CEO time. And I have a whole list, Ash, and I'm happy to share it with the listeners of what to do during that time. Because I know as an owner myself, I'm like, well, what the heck do I do? And how can I get this on a cadence? But if you can get those on a cadence where you check your marketing, you check your billing, you check the KPIs, and it doesn't feel so hard where you're trying to create it every single month, that can Mm -hmm. help you stay consistent. And on top of it, find the areas like checking your and tracking your KPIs. When you see one of those going to the red zone, quickly having a team meeting consistently, doing it with your leadership team, that's going to keep you out of that danger zone. But I really am big on cadences and consistency because I do believe the changes in the consistency and that's how offices cannot be lackadaisical, stay consistent and not slip into those danger zones when they when they fall off track. Uh, I see. Okay. no, you actually hit on some great points there. I mean, the CEO, as you said, you know, there are two parts to it. You have your team. And then, of course, the part about the CEO being responsible and being a good team leader. I, I like that, you know, individual roles, but at the same time, cohesiveness, where you make sure that there's inclusion. You make sure that your team members feel like this is one team and that we're working with each other for uh, collective growth and not just individual growth. And To do that, you have to empower them. You have to make sure that they feel welcome. They're part of the team. And then you as the leader, you know, the CEO, you have to take out, what was it, one to two hours per week? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look too hard. It doesn't. And honestly, Ash, I think that that's one of the pieces that so many people ask me, Kira, like, how are you guys able to grow practices so much? How are you able to help people drop their overhead? How are you able to add this crazy number? I mean, 500,000 to 2.4 million seems like a really sexy number and like, I want to have that. And I tell them it's not crazy, awesome things. What it is, is it's the very basic, simple things. And looking at hundreds of offices, I've been noticing patterns and it's not the crazy things. It's nothing. It's just like anything in life. We all think that there's a magic diet pill out there. And I'm like, no, the real secret is just not eating cookies and candies after nine o'clock at night. Like being disciplined in your eating is really the secret. Same thing with a successful business and being able to be profitable and have that growth is truly in the non-sexy, very simple day in, day out, have a consistent meeting, have your morning huddles, check your PL every single week, look at your money daily, make sure you're checking those numbers, have KPIs that your team really knows how to do. Like boring stuff, Ash, it's not boring, <laughs> but it, that stuff is the stuff that matters. And when we get really good at that, we stay consistent. That's when your teams can thrive and that's when your business will thrive for patients and for you as a as a business owner as well. I see. Now, I feel like that's a difficult thing for our uh, dentist audience to do because they're so clinical in nature. Agreed. And that's where I love to give them the secrets of like all these things and like make it very simple for you because agreed. Like when I owned my first practice, I didn't know what a PNL was. I didn't know what a KPI was. I didn't know how to do this. And so I think we have to remember that, yes, while we're clinical, we also did sign up to be business owners too. And it's not where we can have one without the other. And I don't think you can abdicate your job as CEO and as a business owner. 
Yes, you can have awesome office managers who help you with this, but you've also got to make sure that you're checking and taking care of that business. So I like to almost like personify your business into a person. So if you thought of your business as a team member or as a family member, you wouldn't just let them go and not talk to them and not check in on them. You would check in, you'd make sure that they're fulfilled, that they're doing well, and any of their concerns you're taking care of. And so if we can think of the business like, yes, we're clinical, but let's make the business seem like one of our team members. We've got to make sure that team member specifically, our business, is thriving and jiving so all the rest of this works. I think it can be a zone. And that's where I say one to two hours a week is truly, if you do that consistency, consistently, you will see success and growth and traction um, in your business that you won't see otherwise. And I've still watched hundreds of dentists, Ash. I, I, I can come here with a huge testimonial for you because, and that's what really does separate the successful versus those who struggle is consistently one to two hours where they focus on the business. They're not just sitting there answering emails, but really focusing on the things that will move them forward, checking those KPIs. Even though you're clinical, I know it's not what you want to do. I hate looking at my PL. But that's where the secrets are. That's where the hidden treasure is. And if you'll do be disciplined on it, I promise you success is on the other side of it. I see. You know, I love that perspective. Looking at your business as a team member on its own. Because mm-hmm. in reality, it is a separate entity. I mean, if you look at it from a tax standpoint or a legal standpoint, it is a separate entity. Why not right. treat it like a separate entity? You know? It makes it easier for me because I think then it looks like it's in front of you. I know for me, I care about my team so much and I I try really hard to ensure they're all empowered and taken care of. But yet the business feels like this like aloof, like distant, like it's just this thing where if I can give it a, a personality and make sure I'm taking care of it, instantly it becomes easier because that's something we as business owners already know how to do. We know how to take care of people. We know how to check in on their needs. We don't know how to do that for a business. So making it easier, um, I think, is to me, I like to make things easy. I like to make them on autopilot. I like to make it to where it's less brain power. And when I can simplify it that way, I think it makes it easier to see what I would need to do for a business as opposed to thinking it's some elusive creature that I don't even know what it needs or wants. <laughs> well, you mentioned another key thing there is automation, you know, so I'm it, are, are we talking about streamlining processes, making things easier where there's a system that just can run on its own and you just check up on it every now and then? Yeah. So I really am big on empower your team, get your team to work with you and for you and and help grow this with you. So if we know where as a team where we're going, so that's first and foremost, set a clear vision to where the whole team knows where we're going. And honestly, docs, it's so fun. I've seen this so many times where doctors will be like, Kira, I'm so scared to tell my team like my vision. And it's crazy because you go give your team an opportunity. They usually blow way past your vision to something where you're sitting there like gulping up. Can we do this? Which is awesome because then your team's bought into it. So if we all know where we're headed, then it, to me, I like to just automate anything that we possibly can. And there's so many softwares out there. There's so many things that we can do And so I feel like we're in 2023, leverage the resources available to you, like be a savvy, a savvy owner that way, but also leverage your team. So I am huge on cadences. Anyone who knows me is like, Kira, so on Thursdays, Ash, I podcast like that way. I don't forget when I'm (laughs) podcasting on Tuesdays, I do coaching calls on Wednesdays. I work on marketing because then it doesn't take me brain power to think about it. Just like our morning routines. We know we brush our teeth, we get ready, we shower. None of us think about how we shower. Like, do you start with your hair? Do we start with the arm? Like, no, you've got a system. You're you you mentally created a system for yourself that's on autopilot that you don't even have to use mental power for. So, what in our business can we get? So, for me, things like all right, every month, every meeting, like morning huddle, we have a theme. So Monday is going to be, and this is going to infuse our culture, but we have Monday is Motivation Monday. Tuesday is Testimonial Tuesday. Wednesday's Core Value Shout Out. Thursday's Thankful Thursday. Friday's Fun Friday. Well, now that's a simple system that can be on autopilot that infuses the culture without the dentist needing to run that. Every single Friday, our KPIs are reported and we have a system in play to where they're on a spreadsheet. Everyone enters their numbers, sends it to the doctor doctor reviews it. And then Monday, we've got a meeting with our office manager and our doctor to review it. Every quarter, we come up with a 90-day sprint plan of what are we focused on to get to that high achieving goal. 
And we have that set in, in there. Our one-on-ones are on the second Tuesday of every month for our dental assistants. So whatever it is, you just create these cadences that really then you can push play on. And we don't have to forget because it's in the schedule. The team knows we've got agendas set up for it. And it's crazy because it takes a little bit of time to put that into play to then have like years of freedom because you're not forgetting all these little pieces because it's truly automated with a system in play. And that's why I love systems, Ash. Anything that you can do to systematize your practice, get your team bought into it to where they can push play. They know what the expectation is. They can run it without the dentist needing to be the person directing, guiding, and and leading it. Really empowers your team and makes it to where they then know what levers to turn, what things they need to change, and they can make the decisions without the dentist needing to be the one always guiding and making the decisions for them. Oh, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. But here's the thing. I feel like it's also probably a lot easier for you to put these systems in place because you have that knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, for our listeners, especially if they feel like they're in a rut or they need some systems in place, I feel like educating themselves should be their step one. Agreed. Yeah. And something I love So yes, I have a lot of experience and I geek out on sharing it with you guys. That's why I'm here today. Like, let me make your life easy because I truly do. Like my mission is to positively impact the world of dentistry in the greatest way possible and help the best practices serve more patients and like do it in a great way. Like I'm on a mission to help the best dentists elevate their practices and elevate their lives. And so with that, 100%, there are Like, Ash, we're listening to a podcast right here. There are podcasts galore. Go to YouTube University, chat GPT. Like, you can go to all these resources around you and find out what you should systematize. But something I found, human beings love ease. We love to have things easy for us. And we're just creatures of habit. So if we know that about ourselves, I also, like, whenever we consult a practice or I'm in an office... I look for what is the easiest thing to implement that's going to give me my best ROI. So I think an easy exercise for this when you're like, okay, well, what system do I implement? We've created 12 systems, so kind of give you a little framework on it. But what I found is just do a quick jot. Like I call it my CEO dump. This can be during your um, CEO time during the week, but just do a dump of all the areas that you think are not going well. And I know that doesn't sound super positive and I like to be positive, but just Mm -hmm. list them off. Just have a massive brain dump of like, this isn't working. This isn't working. We're struggling here. And then go through that list and see if you can cluster and chunk them into similar like things, Um, like our new patient experience. Maybe some of those things fall under that new patient experience. So it's not A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Maybe A through G actually fits under this one category because then it makes that huge list become smaller. And then once we get that to a smaller list, I would look at that and say, okay, if I could only implement one system here, so if we went and we researched something or we were to implement something, what's going to give us the best bang for our buck? And that's honestly how I consult practices is I'm literally looking for what is going to be the one or two systems that are radically going to make their lives easier, less stressful, and more profitable because your team will implement that. You will get excited to implement that. Um, And I think we can do it in our own personal lives. We can look at our health. We can look at our relationships. We can look at our mental health. um, We can look at our finances. And of those categories, I can say, oh, well, gosh, like if I were to enhance my relationship with my spouse, a lot of these other things will become more fulfilled for me. Or, oh, I'm going to implement on my health because if I get more energy for myself and I'm able to feel my body better, I'm going to have way more energy to put into my business, into my finances, into my spouse. So we look to see which one of those is really going to move us forward the most. And then from there, go find the experts in the industry. They are out there. I feel like like you scroll you scroll any any of the platforms out there and there are so many topics and tips and things out there for you that I just feel... We are inundated in a world of knowledge. We need to be thirsty for wisdom from experts who have been there and done that and done it successfully. And then we need to take ownership to execute and implement ourselves. Great tip. Great advice. Now, I completely agree, you know, Uh, but that's also another problem that there's probably too much information out there and it gets difficult for, you know, our docs to kind of narrow it down to what should we pay attention to. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. 
I think it's a scary thing. And that's where I said there's so much knowledge, but where is wisdom? And um, I think that there's there's an interesting filtering system that I do for myself. Um, I believe I'm going to go find the person who's done what I'm wanting to do and done it successfully. I don't like theories. And Ash, you might disagree with me. You might like theories. I mean, I think they're good. But when I'm trying to implement something and I'm going for the most efficient, effective way, success does leave clues. And successful people are usually willing to share. So maybe look around you and find a dentist who's doing something really well. If you're not connected to other doctors, get connected. I, I'm obsessed with creating communities for doctors. And there's so many good ones out there. But ask them. Ask them for who are you using for this? What are you doing for that? Look on there. And so I put out there all the time. And I, I recommend when you're listening to people, find out what their track record is. Go listen to the person who's putting on that podcast or who's created the, like, what is their track record? Go find out what they've done because I want to be hitching my wagon to someone who I know has done it and done it successfully that I can follow and mirror. Um, I, I make the, the joke. I don't want to be the person who like you pull back the, the okay. stream from the Wizard of Oz and you notice the person that you've been listening to or following along with has never done it before. I want someone who's been there, done that and can do it with me successfully. So as you're going through, I think there's so much wisdom out there. I really do, Ash. But I think it's also us being disciplined to narrow our vision, pick one or two for a time being, execute on that. And then when we feel we've exhausted that resource, move on to our next one. But that takes a lot of discipline in a world with a lot of noise. But I have found the people who can be disciplined, find the experts in the industry, ask their colleagues. Those people really can filter through for what they're looking for in this vast world of knowledge. But those would be some filtering tips that I would offer for that. Great. No, that's amazing. Good, good, good. Yeah. And do that. It, uh, here's also another thing. I feel like the dental world, yes, there are a lot of experts, but ones with, you know, the credibility, ones with the tenureship, there's only a handful of us. And, <laughs> right? No, I feel like it's a, such a small world. Like everyone knows everyone. Mm hmm. So especially if you're a part of a study club and you have an experienced professional there, ask them that what kind of resources you've used, you know, for your success. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to share those resources with you. And that would be a good starting point. And as Definitely. you mentioned, you know, uh, Kira, that have a trial and error phase, you know, to try them out till you've exhausted that resource and then move on to the next person or next resource that's out there too gain more useful information. For sure. I think it's interesting. And I say this with absolute respect because I think that the coaching industry and the consulting industry is very popular and for good reason. We all need it. Um, mm -hmm. Like we've all got therapists now. I feel like we have evolved as a society. Um, but for me, and this is Kira Dent's personal um, preference, I want someone who's gone through the school of hard knocks themselves that can literally walk me through this experience. Like, that's why I love what we do. I'm like, I've been an office manager. You want to talk about billing and credentialing? Like I've been your girl. I've done that dental assisting, but I'm not a hygienist. So I've got to bring in hygienists who can actually speak authentically to that. Like I have had lawsuits for not having our stuff done in the dental practice. Like I literally had to go up against the board on that. That was downright terrifying. I also know what it looks like to have profitability or non-profitability. And like, what does that actually even look like? Like, I don't care what your top line revenue number is. I want to know what your profit margin is. And people who have actually scaled themselves back to three days or whatever your vision is, there are people out there that have actually done it. Go knock on their door. Go find them. Go ask them. Because I just believe that they actually can empathize with you. They've done it. They know what that feels like. They know the terror on the other side of that door. And so finding them, asking at the study clubs, but I think we have become Ash, and these are my Kira's opinions over here. Uh -huh. I think at a society, we have become so closed off in a lot of ways. We're so quote unquote connected through social media and all the different things, but we forget that you can actually ask another human and be human with them. Like Ash, tell me what, like, what are the struggles it took to get there? And what, if you did this again, would you do it again? And what would you do differently? I think we've forgotten that there is a human element that we can humanize ourselves and make more friends and genuine connections and ask people and people will be honest with you, I hope, 
when you can actually extend that and become truly connected to other people, I believe is invaluable and something I think we could as a society do more of as opposed to only doing it on social where we maybe don't get the nitty gritty that we could get if we if we could truly connect with them as people. Yeah, I completely agree. Yes. And not with the purpose of networking, but actually connecting with that person as an individual, as a human being. Right. And that can maybe lead into networking, but that would be like a bonus, not with that intention. No, I love that. I love that. Well, we're almost towards the end of our episode. Now, uh, it, it was lovely having you and very educational for me and I'm sure for our listeners. Now, before we sign off, Would there be any other tips that you may want our listeners to be aware of, cognizant of? Ooh, yeah. I think one of the, as you said that, and I'll just kind of do some some quick ideas for you. I feel like something that's a, a trap that a lot of doctors get into, and I was looking at what's on the podcast so far, and I think a lot of us are kind of hitting on the same thing, is knowing your numbers. Um... I really just want to encourage and empower owners to know your numbers of your business and not to be afraid of that. I know so many people feel juvenile or they feel like they, they're they not equipped to know this and they feel like they should. And coming from a space of true love, I worked with a bunch of dental students. I worked at Midwestern University's Dental College for three years. And so I just have a massive love for dentists. And I understand the pressures you've gone through to get to where you are. I understand the stress of being a business owner. And I also understand that illusion of feeling like, well, you're a doctor. You should know these answers and not to be afraid because guess what? You don't need to and you don't have to do it all on your own. So um, I'm obsessed with helping people understand their overhead and understanding their profitability margins and understanding which levers to turn, even if you're not a quote unquote math person, because that will give you so much confidence in your business. That will give you so much it will just breed life into you, even if the numbers don't look good, but at least you actually know. And so looking at your numbers as a business, getting KPIs into place. And if you don't know what that is, I'm here to tell you it's a key performance indicator. And so for every position in the practice, what are the top three things for that position that we can track and measure that will actually move the business forward? So like really, yes, be a beautiful clinician and do great work, but also take that beauty and that creativity into the business side of it. Because I will tell you, more stress comes from uncertainty than knowing bad numbers. You sitting there and not knowing your numbers or not knowing what you can do for it causes more stress for you. And if we can reduce that stress for you and make dentistry fun again, to me, that's something that I just say, don't be afraid of that. And don't be afraid to, to love what you do. I believe that we are in the greatest profession ever. I think dentistry can truly change people's lives. It changed my life. Um, I have a very interesting story of a lot of time in a dental chair from an accident that wasn't my own um, and feeling like I had no more confidence in my life. And dentists have been able to give me that confidence back. So you're literally changing lives and not to forget that dentistry, like you're living your dream that you worked so hard. Don't forget to enjoy that dream. Don't forget to enjoy and like, high five and celebrate, even if it's hard, like this is what you signed up for. This is what you, you worked so hard to become and not to lose sight of how beautiful this life is that you're living in. And then go find the resources and the help that you need to make it even easier for you. But Ash, I don't know how you feel, but I'm sure we're aligned. I truly believe that dentistry is the greatest profession any of us could be a part of. And so just reminding you to truly enjoy this. Like when those hard days come, Like high five yourself. This is the success tax for taking the risk for being that business owner. And I will promise you there is help and there is success and there is ease available to you if you just reach out, if you ask for it. And I just think know your numbers, be a culture master and remember that you are truly, in my opinion, the greatest place you could ever ask to be in. And it's pretty magical what we get to do and change lives of our our team members and the, our community and the patients that we get to serve. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. Great words, positive words coming from you. And not just educational, but also inspiring. And, you know, I can see why, you know, you, you would be a good coach. Thank uh, you. The business owners out there. Well, I'm truly honored to have you on our episode today. And hopefully in the future, we can work again. I'm, I was really excited when I heard that you're going to be on our episode. I'm like, yay, finally. And then, of course, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this, but, you know, uh, Kira, 
their dental A team also has their own podcast. So if you want to, you know, talk about that. You can. Yeah, that'd be awesome, Ash. I appreciate that because I love helping break this down, like the complexity and making it so simple because complexity is the enemy of execution. So let's make life simple. So I'm all about the tactical, practical, what you can go implement today. So thank you guys for having me on. I love all things dentistry. My last name really is Dent. Um, people always joke that it's a stage name and it's not. Just took me three fiancés, Ash. That's all it took. But yeah, we do have our podcast. So the Dental A Team podcast, we'd love to have you join and listen there. We're going to cross collaborate. I'd love to be back on here. And if there's anything we can ever do, you can email me hello at the dentalateam.com or check out our website. We've got a lot of free resources. I love to just give you all the resources on our website. If you go to our podcast tab, any topic, any issue. So if you know those systems you want to implement, just type that in. Every podcast that we've ever done will pull up for you. And there's always tactical pieces for you on there. So super honored to be here. Love what you guys are doing, Ash, on Beyond Bite Wings and just super appreciative of the time with you today. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond by Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at and associates.com.